Things are so much worse than we thought. If you're at least 25 years old, you've seen at least a 75% decline in total insect biomass on Earth in your lifetime. Only 4% of mammals are wild animals. The rest, 60%, are livestock, and 36% are just people. If you wondered what it means when people say there's a mass extinction event around humans, I'm going to tell you about it. You should at least know what's going on. You often hear that we lose around 3% of total insects on Earth every year, but here's what that means. The loss of insects has been attributed to light pollution, the use of pesticides, as well as the loss of the natural habitat, but insects support everything else. And yeah, long-term estimates that have been tracking insects in Germany estimated a 75% decline. Puerto Rico estimated a 98% decline in 26 years of total insects. So yeah, when you were a kid, there were more insects hitting your windshield. This is a global decline. It's happening everywhere. But the loss of insects is collapsing everything else. We are veering towards catastrophe. Also, 70% of all avian biomass on Earth is poultry. That means that most birds on Earth are chickens, and most mammals are cows and pigs. Yes, humans have destroyed that much on this planet. We are an incredible destructive force, and you know what? I've always had an affection for things like raccoons, coyotes, and pigeons. Less so rats. I'm still kind of sore about the whole 1700s thing. But I honestly have an appreciation for anything that can survive humanity. And we do see animals that live in close contact with people evolving around people to survive. We see swallows having shorter wings to be able to fly in and around buildings and bridges. And yes, the rodents in New York are actually terrifying. We also need insects to break down materials, things like ants. I may dislike them, but they have a job. They just interfere with our lives, and we're destroying them. When the ecosystem is disrupted in such a massive scale, we just can't adjust to it, and that's going to be the environment. Humans will probably survive. We will build biodomes, but the Earth will not be habitable. For you know everything else that has to live on this planet. We also need things like bees for approximately 75% of our crops. Now, you may not know this, but I work in agriculture. I'm a molecular biologist, and I study things that can be self-fertilizing. Granted, things like alfalfa are not very good at it. We will probably change the kind of crops we use if we end up with this collapse of the honeybees. And there's been a lot of work towards things like robotic bees, which I honestly think it might be better to just figure out how to save the bees than make robots. Humans get away with being really intelligent. That's why we don't have to have things like venom or claws or sharp teeth or strong jaws. But we are very short-sighted, and we are already in a catastrophe. I will not say we are veering towards a catastrophe. We are already there. You, of course, may say whatever you want about climate change. Is it human-caused? Are humans accelerating it? I, at least I think we all got together and decided that, yes, the climate is changing there are ice ages, and there are ages without ice on our planet. We are exiting an ice age. Ice at their poles is melting, and that is causing these sea levels to rise. And yeah, there is a lot of very good evidence that humans are responsible for at least moving it a little faster. Let's not forget deforestation, because forests do regulate the climate. They have their own climates, and there needs to be enough trees so that they can do that job. What we are now seeing are climate refugees. It's estimated that in the next 25 years, there will be over a billion climate refugees. We are already seeing that in the South Pacific. We're seeing that as islands are flooding and entire nations like Tuvalu, the origin of .tv domains. Yeah, they are being evacuated because it is too dangerous to live there, and the islands will be underwater, but they're not the only ones. All the low-lying islands have to either leave or not exist. Guess what? Those people are going to have to go somewhere. And if you live in the U.S., it's going to happen here too. I mean, some cities might be drowned, but what is going to happen is all of that agriculture, all of the cities that are pulling from fossil water, the water that's millions of years old, that forms underground, when those are empty, people will have to move. Either that or figure out how to get water directly from the air. Desalination is going to have to be a bigger issue, and I think we will figure it out. It's just that it seems that all that will live on this planet with us are going to be livestock and other people. I gotta say, my desire to go live in the forest and be a hermit is very high. What can any one of us do to make a difference? 
nothing. There's not a thing any one person can do. Everyone could get together and try to fix this problem. You could make an argument that people just overconsume. But I gotta tell you, if we look through all of human history, we have always overconsumed. Could theoretically humans live in harmony with the environment? Probably not. I do not see a way that everyone on this planet could get together, change their behavior, and suddenly live in harmony. It's just not possible. I, I don't have answers for you. This, this is really bad.